open the page. I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the one take it off you. Warum? How do you encourage a traditional teacher to try new techniques? It's a crucial challenge here at King's High, an underperforming secondary in central Bournemouth, which needs to take urgent action to reach its A to C's target, including English and maths. With your pen, please, next to Elvis's twin sister, the title, could you put the word icon? John Bailey's working with acting head of English, Verity Marlowe. She's line managing Linda Knight, who has 27 years of teaching experience behind her. Can anybody remember which poem we've looked at before? Caroline Duffy's, please. Before you were mine. You sure that's hers? You absolutely should. Good. Another one? It's a year 11 GCSE poetry class with hard to motivate students on the CD borderline. In the past, the school would have been content with Ds, but their drive now is to turn them into A to Cs. Um, up here, we have the focus for the lesson, please. Linda's targets are to engage student interest with a wider range of teaching techniques, including the use of IT. We're looking at the subject, we're going to dissect it a bit, and the main themes in the poem. You'll be impressed with me today, folks. I'm using technology. I know you're taken aback by my technical skills today. <laughs> so am I. You can tell she's doing something new. <laughs> right, could you just have a look at that for a moment, please? And I'm just going to play you something. Again, I'm hoping that my technology skills will be all right. I've been working on this all at break time. She's really made a huge effort there. She's quite frightened of technology in that way. Um, so to have it as a visual was, was really good. Uh, if, if using a bit more IT, is one of her targets. Well, there it was. You'd have to say there's someone um, certainly giving it a go. Under it, there's another statement. Elvis is alive and she's female. And that's by this singer. Am I going to get it right? The poem by Carol Ann Duffy contrasts Elvis Presley's life with that of a nun. And Linda's been experimenting with visuals and music to stimulate student interest. Yeah, I wanted to get off and dance then, because I really enjoyed that, having a jig. Half past five here yesterday, I was jigging around to that, but that would not be a nice sight to see. So I'm glad you didn't see it. So we've got Elvis there, Madonna there. She's quite a bubbly personality. She's quite, um, you know, she can be quite outrageous in, her, in the way in which she, she talks and um, behaves at the front of the classroom. And when she did allow it to come through, the kids kind of woke up to it. What is a nun's role? Yana, see you with me, love, please. Put the file down for the moment. Right, I'm just going to try and pull somebody else. Simon, what does a, a nun represent? Uh, God. God, thank you. Did you hear him? OK, a nun represents God. Pop singers like that, major ones, tend to often are icons. They're icons for very special reasons. Does anybody know why? Does anybody know why would they want to be like them, or why would people look up to them? Why would people look up to them? Anybody, any ideas? Marcus, any idea why anybody would look up to a top pop star? It doesn't have to be them. It could be one now, I don't know, one of the pop... Amy Winehouse, it could be, I don't mind. Why do people Just look up to them? because they're so famous. And... They are so famous. Come on, I need you to talk to me. You usually do. This is good, but I, I, I kind of want to um, yeah, rattle their cage a bit. What do you think about that? Pardon? Linda really likes to have total control over the classroom. Very, very strong disciplinarian. And that kind of bringing them in with one hand and supporting them in the way she's talking to them, but also wanting total silence, resulted in quite a quiet lesson, which she wanted to be discuss discursive. So I think there was a, um, an uncomfortable tangent between the two. What about what they've got in there? Money. 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 And something that's important, beginning with P, they've got a lot of power. power. Thank you. I think what was happening here was that she was looking for very specific answers and she was even giving them the first letter of the answer that she wanted. Yes. But they weren't um, as engaged in it as they could have been. In the convent, ye all, I tend the gardens. 
watch things grow. Pray for the immortal soul of rock and roll. They call me Sister Presley here. The Reverend Mother digs the way I move my hips just like my brother. Gregorian chant drifts out across the herbs. Pasha nostrum immobilis est. It's definitely a method of imparting knowledge. What do you think about it? Their enjoyment of English is only just beginning to show. They're only just beginning to blossom up until now, at this point of the year. I think they've found it quite difficult kind of involving themselves or wanting to learn or seeing a reason for it. And I think that that method is going to curb any enthusiasm that they might have. A wimple with a novice sewn, lace band, a rosary, a chain of keys, a pair of good and sturdy blue suede shoes. To have the poem up on the board would have been a starting point. Um, and I think that we really needed to get some discussion going, them finding the evidence for, rather than line by line, what does it mean, now write it down, what does it mean, write it down. 20 minutes into the lesson, Linda gets the students working in pairs to look up references to Elvis in the poem. A few more seconds, each verse. But again, she's reluctant to really let go. And five minutes later, she resumes teaching from the front. Can you write that down, please? This is a poem of contrast between Elvis's life and a nun's life. In the exam, OK, you will be asked to give a personal response to the poem. You can say you didn't like the poem, but you have to give reasons for it. Okay, it's very led, isn't it? Very much so. Um, you need to back that up. It's an interesting question, isn't it, this balance between teaching to the exam, getting mm. children over a border on the one hand, um, and taking a risk and getting them more stimulated and engaged in the other. How many people quite like this? Just hands up. How many people quite like the poem? Hands up. Good. So Simon really doesn't like the poem. Is anybody not sure? It's OK. Fairly OK. It's all right. Bits of it are all right. OK. We, we discovered that... Our upset friend there didn't like it. Most of them didn't. A couple of them half liked it. But why? What was good about it? What set you on fire? I think Linda will have to take a step back and allow them the, uh, mm. the manoeuvrability to take over a little bit. You're acting head of department and there's someone a few years older than you. Um, is that daunting? What does it feel like? Um, at first, it was very, very difficult. I've developed more confidence in my ability and as I've developed more confidence in what I know I can do, I think that they have developed more confidence in me. Sometimes I think that when I give feedback or um, offer ways of doing things, I think that I, I get a smile and a nod, but I'm not sure that they're really engaging. What would be the minimum you'd want to get out of, uh, out of this feedback? The minimum that I would like is for her to have picked one or two um, targets that she would like to try and modify or improve upon. For feedback, Verity wants to further challenge Linda's traditional approach. But John Bailey is interested to hear Linda's response. It's the stuff of nightmares. What I saw in the lesson were lots of beginnings and I thought that you made huge efforts to do things in, in a new, innovative way with the music, with the visuals, mm. with those kind of things. And they're fantastic building blocks. And I think the next stage mm. is to have the confidence to do it regularly and then take it further. Yeah. With the images, I thought it was very good that you got them discussing each of the characters because by that point you had about three or four students who wanted the next bit of learning. Um, I think... Possibly we need to kind of look at how to get the rest of them. Yes, oh, in. yeah, they're very passive. Um, I think I did, in terms of I kept asking them questions, I won't let them not answer, because I did direct questions to them. Is there a way of using that questioning um, to kind of involve them more, do you think? Can you put that again, how so to make the questioning more active? How to make the active? Question, yeah. Yeah. What, what sort of... Um, questions could how could you direct the questions in a way that more students would want to kind of latch on and involve themselves in the discussion? 
Mm. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I mean, in a way, you could pause, transfer the questions to them, almost, so that you give them the responsibility of asking the questions. Yeah. So as a group, they could come up with questions, not just coming up with answers. I think that would that be That would fantastic. be interesting. But I think the next stage would be, um, with the questioning, to give them a question and the time to then turn to the person next to them, discuss yeah. it. And it probably yeah. would get quite boisterous and you would get one or two students going off task. But then when they fed back to your initial question, mm. they would have more to offer. Um, I think that's right. Yeah, I think so. There's a balance, isn't there, between the understanding of the poem because of the course um, and time for exploration. Mm -hmm. And my focus at the moment is a sense of, I'm almost, and, and, I, and forgive me for saying that, I'm almost conscious, I just want to get them through the poetry yeah. and finish, you know, and then move on because there's so much else that we have to do. And you have a very, very... Linda has accepted of some of Verity's suggestions. And I think when you let but John go, wants to know how comfortable she really sparkle, feels about the process. Mm. The students love. Overall then, I think it was a lesson that showed some fantastic, mm. positive starts mm. to a variety of different techniques. And I think what we'd like to see next is, is how you build on those. Yes. You know, it is that balance, isn't it, between technique, personal response, content, you know. It's spinning lots of different plates mm. at once, isn't it? And it's very but I think we've it. made some very, genuinely, I think you've made some really shrewd comments. Well done. I don't know whether this is a tricky question or not. I don't mind. This kind of feedback, where does it fit in the scheme of things? How honest can, how honest can I be? I'd like you to tell the truth. Um, well, actually, I think that was very, very positive. So I will take on board a lot of what was said there. Um, sometimes I don't. I think some of the techniques that are suggested to me are of the moment. And teaching is cyclical and we see these things go around and come back again but when i'm learning and gaining information gaining knowledge on my teaching i think it's very valuable so i rate this highly but sometimes i don't depends who's doing it and how i feel about it so the observation better be pretty good oh i think it should be good for everybody can i just keep pressing on this of course you can you can ask me i've got nothing to hide no no i'm, I'm v interested People like myself who've been in it a long time sort of haven't chosen perhaps to go the upward route but have gone tangential. The experience that I've gathered doesn't count for very much anymore. The fast trackers are the ones that are seen as gleaming. And um, I think that we all, there's, there's a mutual benefit we can all offer. Mm -hmm. And we're all valuable. And we've all got a lot to give. I thought that it was at times very useful, very informative, um, but I also think that you saw a bit of um, attitude, if you like. <laughs> you can see that what we're dealing with is somebody who has been in the profession for a long time, who's seen an awful lot of change. A fantastic um, classroom practitioner who's, I think, a little bit frightened by all the changes that are happening. It's an interesting balance, isn't it? I was wondering that I'd made you too directive by asking you what your minimum criteria were. Was it because I'd put pressure on you? I'm glad that I was di direct, actually. I think, I'm, I think that she respects the, the feedback more. She doesn't want to be told, um, you know, that everything's perfect, because no lesson is ever, I think, perfect. Mm.